Hey what's going on guys, Arava here and welcome back to another F1 2018 game video and this one is going to be some actual gameplay now. So we've got a mix of gameplay from the IGN, Square Enix and Twitch streams. The, in terms of the quality of the gameplay, the uh, frame rate and the actual resolution is not going to be obviously anything like the final thing. Obviously I'm recording these off a live stream with hotel Wi-Fi as I'm actually out in LA for E3 2018 right now. So um, you know just kind of take the gameplay with a pinch of salt essentially but you can clearly see in terms of what we've heard in terms of the visual fidelity of the game has improved quite a lot. Uh, they talked a lot about improving the cloud tech of, of the game when the when the game first kind of got announced and that was kind of a bit of an in-joke but you can clearly see like uh, Lee's kind of mentioned on the live streams they kind of worked on a lot of little things around the circuit to all come together and they have definitely made a step up from 2017 which is you know difficult because 2017 I think was already at a pretty good stage but they definitely have gone that little bit more and you can see kind of looking further on if you're right now in the cockpit view of this Ferrari looking down to turn one where we're, when we're back at the chicane you can just see it looks a bit more like lifelike I guess you could say and in terms of obviously right now in the gameplay you can see uh, the halo there without the middle pillar so uploaded four videos yesterday about F1 2018 game news. We have the handling ERS and the AI video. We have the interview video, the contract video, and the R&D system video. So in the very first one, we talked about the Halo tweaks. So in cockpit cam only, you can remove that middle pillar, and this is what it looks like. So you can see it frames the, the gameplay quite well, but then when you move to T-cam, you can't remove that. Um, obviously, they have to have it in the game because it's the rules of Formula 1, but uh, in the cockpit cam, they try to rectify that issue where in real life you have that kind of sense of depth of your eyes looking past the halo like if you if you hold your hand up in front of your face you can kind of see through it with your different perspectives of your eyes whereas in the game you don't have that it's a flat screen so to kind of rectify that they're allowing you to remove that middle pillar uh, in cockpit cam which I think in itself like I said in yesterday's video is, is a great thing that Liberty Media and F1 allow them to do because it's not actually obviously like in real life but um, they allow them to do it because uh, you kind of need that kind of difference because the video game but in the past I think F1 has definitely been a stickler in terms of what they allow the F1 game to do so happy that they, uh, they were able to kind of let that ha happen so in the gameplay here we see a little bit of what the AI is capable of Fernando Alonso big dive bomb down to turn one you don't see the AI diving down like that too much and at that same point Lee immediately started talking about the AI being a bit more aggressive and perhaps you know going for the moves a bit more and we talked about obviously in the very first video I made yesterday that the AI now will try and defend from you they'll drift across to try and cut the inside line off if you go down the inside they will not hesitate to try and cut you off if you're trying to dive down the inside and it's too much of an ambitious move uh, but apart from that not too much look at the AI because immediately then uh, yeah this is Lee Mather playing it as he's talking on the interview so I think uh, everyone can be harsh on him but it clearly he's kind of a bit preoccupied doing the interview so the driving wasn't amazing there so that's kind of all we saw of the AI essentially um, so we don't really get much of an insight which is a bit of a shame at this stage, um, you know, the, the gameplay doesn't offer too much insight into what the game is going to be like, apart from literally what it looks like visually. Uh, you can see now with some rain gameplay of the Ferrari on the T-cam then you can see the Halo is kind of uh, exactly like it kind of is in real life with the kind of winglets and stuff. That was a concern from some of you guys on Twitter asking about that. Obviously, when they did the hot lap with Charles Leclerc, it wasn't a final kind of build and uh, clearly this build is a bit more further along the kind of pipeline, I guess you could say, compared to that gameplay video they did with Leclerc at Monaco, but the Ferrari gameplay here, full wet conditions, uh, the wet looking as uh, horrendous as ever as it was in the last game in terms of how treacherous it's going to be, uh, but let's quickly talk about the MFD then and the heads up display, so on the bottom right now for the first time you can see what the ERS system is going to look like on the heads up display, how you'll know how much battery you have on that bottom right, you can see the battery pack is going to either kind of decrease or increase there depending on the deployment mode you're in, and previously we saw on the Red Bull gameplay when the MFD uh, menu was up, you could see just like the fuel, it's literally just a little um, kind of slot and uh, column, if you will, that is ERS, and you can flick it left and right to go from none, low, medium, hot lap, and overtake. Uh, did that in the wrong order. Overtake and hot lap. Hot lap being the, the one with the most deployment from the ERS. So that's how you're going to see the ERS then in-game. Um, and in terms of like the, the development of that in career mode, obviously that's part of the R&D tree, and so you'll be able to develop that. But that's how it's going to be displayed, essentially 
of the game. Obviously, if you're doing cockpit cam, it's on the wheel. We saw that from the Monaco gameplay. The two bars that are right now on the heads-up display are displayed right on the actual cockpit right at the bottom. We now cut on to a Force India. Apologies for the frame rate on this gameplay because uh, it's from the Twitch live stream. And Twitch, I don't know, I think they, I think they streamed it in 30 FPS for some reason, so... That was a little bit annoying, but yeah, so good spread. We've had the Ferrari, we've had the Red Bull and the Force India now. It looks like these are the only three cars that they're kind of willing to show at the moment at E3. Uh, obviously, you can't hear the sounds at the moment because honestly, there's no point giving you the sound because you can hardly really hear the engine that much because Lee Man is obviously getting interviewed by these guys the entire time. So he, he's talking, the presenter's talking the entire time uh, whilst the gameplay is being shown. So you can hardly hear the engine, but what from what we have seen, the audio audio let's get to that because i haven't really mentioned that ever in any of the videos the audio it seems they've really stepped it up this year there are props to the audio team at cody's because in the past the audio has been okay but it's not really been as desirable as you want it to be like real to, to, the, to the real life uh, cars but this year it seems like they've literally nailed it like especially the ferrari car i think that was very clear from the leclerc gameplay at monaco a lot of you guys were picking up on that and making a big deal about it in terms of the ferrari for the first time that v6 turbo engine really does sound like real life and also the difference to the red bull car and then the force india if you really really eagle your kind of hearing in you can really tell the difference between the mercedes the renault and the, and the ferrari engine so they've done a really great job on that to step that up it's uh you know not an area that they can you know it's, it's an area that's a very throwable away area like you, you they could easily not care about that but the audio team has continuously tried to improve year on year and this year they're definitely taking that further step for the 2018 cars and the v6 turbo but yeah we're going through mexico now so we had a good spread of uh, tracks as well canada uh mexico uh spa it was as well um so unfortunately no kind of signs of hockenheim or uh, the french grand prix yet paul ricard obviously work in progress gameplay maybe they're not quite ready to show us Hockenheim and Paul Ricard in the flesh in F1 2018 but definitely as I mentioned before something I'm really looking forward to is having Hockenheim back on the circuit because I uh, on the game because I really really did enjoy uh, that circuit to drive on F1 2016 it was a lot of fun the AI were really fun to race around Hockenheim on F1 2016 and so it was a bit of a shame not to have it in 2017 with the high downfall so that'll be interesting itself to see how that goes on but in terms of kind of comments any other comments on the gameplay we don't really know much else obviously i had a hands-on on a play seat uh kind of setup so that's the kind of bucket seat racer with a wheel set up uh but it wasn't like i said in my video yesterday it wasn't completely ideal to get a feel of it i could definitely feel the suspension was a lot more improved the curbing was uh, a lot more violent like i talked about they've upped that up to a, a thousand hertz so you can see the frequency of the curbing a bit more in terms of like the the feedback it gives to the wheel and i'm assuming also the controller as well in terms of playing with a halo, obviously in cockpit cam with that Miller pillar removed, definitely a lot easier to kind of see everything. So kind of, I really do like they've made that addition, uh, and it frames it really well, like I said. Um, but in T cam, I think if you're going to play the game in T cam, uh, still be persistent with that. Uh, then it's going to be a case of like in real life, you kind of almost just have to get used to it and just kind of blend in. I mean, honestly, like after like the one lap I did around Australia in my hands on. Uh, like two days ago with the game I literally kind of almost forgot about it because you're kind of looking ahead on the circuit you're not looking at actually at your car obviously it's a bit different when you're looking back at gameplay and your eyes wander down to the halo at the bottom of the screen or rather in this way on the copper cam at the top of your screen but you know it's something that we have to deal with it's you know just like in real life it's there it's there to stay at least um for the foreseeable future but you know, props to them, like I said, for trying to make it work, at least with the cockpit cam. Uh, I don't think they could ever do that, though, with the T-cam, because there's no there's no need to, because you're not really obstructing your view, because you can see plenty of the track ahead anyway. But that's going to be it for me from talking about the gameplay, because, like I said, to be honest, you really can't read that much into it. I think... Um, you know, you can see the visual improvements. You can see finally what the, the that Halo tweak looks like, but and and what the ERS looks like on the on the menu. But apart from that, there's not really any other kind of info you can tell from these gameplay videos. So that's why I'm going to tell you guys to really, really. I highly recommend if you haven't seen the full videos I uploaded yesterday about the handling and the ERS, how that actually works in the game, and also the AI, uh, the interviews are uh, back in career mode, how that works, and then you got the new contract system with contract perks, and then finally the new revamped R&D system which I call a big game changer essentially. The R&D system is a huge game changer so if you haven't seen those four videos I really, really do recommend that because that's kind of all the actual info, the actual, the actual useful info that will actually tell you what's going to be new in the game rather than the gameplay. Yeah it's well, all well and good seeing the game but you don't actually really get to get a sense of what's 
actually going to be new and how it kind of, you know, is, is going to be different to 2017. You kind of, because, uh, you know, as much as you, you can kind of look into it, F1 is going to be F1 at the end of the day. But anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed the gameplay video, then hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're on your own here, do get subscribed for weekly, for long content. I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.